Okay, so this lecture is all about roots of drug administration. So let's start the lecture. First of all, we see the classification of root of the uh, main roots of drug administrations, and it is been divided into majorly two parts. One, local, and second is systemic. So local roots and systemic roots. If we talk about local roots, there are few that are topical root, deeper tissues, and arterial supply. Okay, please uh, keep that thing in your mind, arterial supply. And if we talk about systemic roots of drug administrations, these are oral, sublingual, rectal, cutaneous, inhalational, nasal, subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous and intradermal. So these are the different routes through which we can give the drugs. Now how to choose uh, this which of the routes you want to choose because there are many routes but out of which which is the best for you. So all these thing depends on different factors. So drugs and different factors which are the different conditions on which basis you need to choose a root. So first of all is physical and chemical property of drugs. So first factor, so these are the factors which mainly help you to choose a particular root. So first factor is physical and chemical properties of drugs. These are what kind of that drug is, whether this drug is solid, whether this drug is liquid or it's in a gaseous form. Second, its solubility, how soluble it is, its stability, how stable it is, its pH and its irritant properties. So all these things are important again to choose a drug and these are physical and chemical properties of drug. Second factor that help us to choose a route is site of desired actions on which site you want an action. If you want a localized and approachable site or if you want generalized action or non-approachable. So depending upon which site you want, you need, uh, that is one more factor which help us to choose a route. Third is rate and extent of absorption from various routes. How much that drug is absorbed from that route or through which, uh, through which rate that drug gets absorbed through that route. So this rate and extents of absorptions, that is one more factor. Next is effect of digestive juices and first pass metabolism. We'll, we'll discuss those things in, in later on. But right now just remember those digestive juices in our stomach, uh, they having a role in choosing a particular route. Okay, they are affecting a drug absorptions. So that plays an important role whether you want the digestive juices to interfere with your actions or not. So that is one more factor. Rapidity of desired response. How rapid you want that response? Whether this condition is emergency condition or it's a routine conditions. So depending upon the conditions, you want to choose that particular route. Accuracy of dosage. Whether you want to give IV or inhalation. So accuracy of doses is also important. Condition of patient, that is the most important factors. Okay, so this is the most important factors. Whether the patient is conscious, whether the patient is vomiting, these are just an example. Or patient is conscious, unconscious, vomiting, having convulsions. So all these are different conditions which needs to take into account for choosing a particular route. So these are different factors which you need to consider before choosing a particular route. Now let's talk about first pass metabolism, the word we just noticed earlier. What is first pass me metabolism and that has been frequently asked in your viva examinations. That is also been frequently asked in your theory examinations. Now what is this first pass metabolism? Metabolism of a drug, so first of all it's a metabolism. But where? Metabolism of drug in gut wall or water circulation. So first thing it's clear, it's a metabolism of drug in gut wall, GI mainly gastrointestinal walls and portal circulations but important thing is before reaching the systemic circulations so you have given a drug 
before reaching the systemic circulation it goes under metabolism and that is called as first pass metabolism so the amount reaching the systemic circulation is less than amount get absorbed okay so let's uh, sim simply uh, take uh, this thing by one example this now here giving you are giving a oral drug so drug which has been administered orally our first exposed to liver and may be metabolized before reaching rest of the body so you have given the drug orally so now it goes through venous circulation into the liver so you have given the drug orally it goes into the intestine from which it's absorbed into the venous circulation and this venous circulation through which it reaches to the liver and from liver there is some part gets metabolized okay and after the metabolism remaining part goes into the systemic circulation at the site of actions clear so you have given the drug which orally it goes into the portal circulations where it gets metabolized and remaining of the drug reaches to the site of action or systemic circulations so this part here where the metabolism occurs initial metabolism occurs before reaching the systemic circulation that is called as first pass metabolism clear so hope you are clear so where this first pass metabolism occurs so mostly it occurs in liver this first pass metabolism also occurs in gut wall and gut lumen as well so gi lumen gi wall liver these are the frequent sites of first pass metabolism so clear first pass metabolism of a drug that metabolism occurs in gut wall or portal circulation before reaching the systemic circulation what happens eventually so what is the result of this first pass metabolism like for an example you have given orally a hundred percent drug just hypothetically imagine you have given hundred percent of drug orally it goes into the liver and 25 percent drugs get metabolized into the liver so now we have only 75 percent drug reaches at the site of actions so actually you are giving orally hundred percent drug but effective drug concentration is only 75 percent what happens to 25 percent that is first pass metabolism so even after giving 100 percent of the drug your actual drug that reaches to the systemic circulation is 75 percent so 75 percent drug is the acting drug mean the active drug so that is the result of first pass metabolism that low bioavailability the availability at the site of action is low and because of that the duration might get affected a drug which, which it's having a duration for an example is eight hour now it would be having a duration of around six hours so these are the results of bioavailability so always do consider those kind of thing while choosing a drug and a route uh, thank you for listening to it uh, and if you are having any queries, uh, do let me know in your comment box and I will try and solve them. Thank you.